I've been wiring up the transponder uh, today. I did the uh, ICOM A210 uh, radio uh, yesterday. The transponder is very uh, simple. First of all, Steinbruck over at Steinair and Mike and the guys made a nice harness for me. And then uh, Vertical Power sends the uh, leads with the special connectors. So I've spliced those on. And now I'm going to put them in the uh, connector for the uh, Vertical Power uh, unit. And I've already filled out this load planning worksheet, so I already know which pin it's going to go to. So I just look up Garmin Transponder and follow across, and I have that scheduled for pin uh, number 9 on this 16-pin uh, connector. And then, I find the ninth pin, which is right there. Line up the index. Uh, okay, and push it in until it clicks. Whoops, there we go. So now I have to put, I've got the transponder in there, now I've got to put the uh, ICOM A210 radio in. Going above that will be an air gizmo uh, dot for a GPS. Access to the ICOM 210 is a little funky. you got to put a 332 uh, Allen wrench into these two holes and turn it until it comes loose on each side and then there's a little ribbon cable here that comes off. I mean it's just a little thin gizmo. I'm not real thrilled with that whole setup but there you go and that has to get disconnected. You want to disconnect the cable not the connector. All right, so that's off. And you can see in the rack already, I've already installed the wiring harness in the back and the cable connection. So we slip this baby in here, like so. Got to get them lined up just so, and then start cranking clockwise. That'll pull the radio in. And then reattach the cable and tighten clockwise. That ribbon is a real pain in the neck to get reattached because you have to kind of thread it back up so the plate doesn't squish it when you tighten it. There. That's a radio stack for a bare bones pay-as-you-go blue collar uh, kind of guy. So we've got the radio hooked up, the transponder hooked up, and then I just have to run a couple of wires on the PS Engineering um, 1002 uh, intercom, and then we can uh, fire up. And a lot of this uh, pre-work comes from uh, the load planning worksheet, because each pin is a little bit different in terms of the max amps and current and all that sort of stuff. And so once you figure out your, your uh, your uh, electrical system and go through the spreadsheet that Vertical Power describes, probably 60% done. So I go over here and I look uh, at my trusty little spreadsheet and I find out that this is going to be on, Intercom is going to be on pin 20 on the J8 uh, connector. The J8 connector is actually on this side of the uh, vertical power control unit. The big uh, uh, plug is actually on, on this side. This also has the ground for the unit. I've just kind of taped uh, the connector back. Wow, I did some install work. Plug her in. Get that nice click. And I had already run the ground wire for the intercom to the block here, so that takes care of the intercom. The main feeder cable comes from your battery or your contactor to here. It's easy to set up, and then I just put a little boot on it. Okay. I've now installed the uh, radios, the transponder, the intercom, put the batteries uh, back on, battery back on, wired it up, 
And so now I'm ready to configure the vertical power system. And here's how it works. I flip up the uh, master and it does a check of everything. If there's a problem, this uh, red light here comes on. And you can see that it tells me uh, everything I need to know. But what I have to do is configure uh, this to uh, uh, set up the uh, various parameters, uh, amps and all that sort of stuff. And to do that, I can remember how to do that. I go to the setup menu here and flip through until I get to devices. That's kind of the enter key. And I look at my little switch here. I want to set up the ICOM, which is going to be on switch number one. And so I just, uh, oops, switch number one, which currently says empty. And, let's see, if I always get this wrong. First it wants to know the name, and I'm going to call it Icon. So I just cycle through. I, enter. I'm kind of doing this backwards, I guess. Whoop, C. O M. Save it. Now it wants to know how you want this to come up. Uh, if you want to put it on a switch or you have it always be on. I want to put it on uh, switch number three, which is going to be here. So I enter. Uh, switch number three. And it wants to know the breaker information, the breaker information, and again this is on this uh, spreadsheet that I've created here. The breaker is going to be a 10 amp breaker, which it's already set for, so I can just... The fuse is a standard fuse. What am I... Oh, see, you can be either slow or standard. And then save it. And then... I have to go all the way to the end here and exit out of this program. it out of that and you're back to the beginning. So now we flip it on. One, two, three. And up comes the transponder. And up comes the icon. And what I really like about this is you can change these at any time. Not only the devices you have in there, but also uh, how you want to group them. And I haven't really given enough thought yet as to how I want to group the switches, um, and, but I will. But you have complete flexibility for, for how to do that. So the panel's coming along. Of course, every time I think I'm done with a component, I find something else that needs fixing. We just put the wings on to fit them, and I realize that the fuel line is kinked. So now I've got to run a new fuel line. But it's always something.